a relationship, a breakup, egos, and AI stuck in the middle? The answer lies in the data, and I'll find it, Molly tells her CEO, Brian. You better, shouted Brian, as he slammed the door, walking out of her office. The company lost 15% of its customers in the past three months. No one knows why. Molly had to find out. Her job was at stake. Meet Molly, the VP of operations. Brilliant, fast-paced, and a total go-getter. It didn't make sense. Sales are up. Software bugs are down. Still, customers are quitting. She knows the answer lies deep in the data, but accessing them means involving the enterprise architecture team. And that's a problem because the head of enterprise architecture is Steve, her ex-fiance. She almost picks up the phone to call him, but her ego gets in the way. I'll do it without his help, she murmurs, deciding to go at it alone. Molly decides to ignore Steve entirely by using some leftover money in her budget to buy an AI platform. She told her team to break the rules. Forget the paperwork, she said. Find a vendor now. Within two weeks, they picked the tool. Ventura.ai is the cloud-based tool. These guys had the best demo. She wanted things to move fast. So Molly tells her team, get all the data we control. I don't want to ask anyone else for permission. Her engineers gather the files, but the moment they attempt to upload it to Ventura.ai, the screen flashes red. Error. Unauthorized upload. Data quarantined. Molly's face turns red. She's sure that Steve had set up the system to block her. She stormed out, sure he was doing this just to hurt her. Molly kicks open the door to Steve's office. She slams the rejection printout on his desk. Is this about us? Steve doesn't flinch. He turns his monitor around. It's not about us, Molly. It's about the lawsuit you almost caused. He points to the security log. I blocked you because you were about to upload 10,000 unmasked customer records into a public server. Molly clenches her teeth. Steve has more news. I actually did you a favor. Even if I let you through, it wouldn't work. Sales uses customer IDs and support uses user IDs. They don't match. He leans back on his chair and puts his hand over his head. If you feed AI bad data, it won't tell you the truth. It'll just lie to make you happy. That's called AI hallucination. Have you ever had a project stall because two departments or leaders refused to share information or data? Let me know in the comments below. Back to the video. You can hear the silence. Molly ever so slightly nods. She realizes that her fast solution would be a disaster. Letting go of her ego, Molly asks Steve if he can help. Feeling nostalgic, he says, sure, we have to force two systems to speak the same language. It's a mess. Sales tracks customer IDs based on email addresses, while support tracks user IDs based on account creation dates. The two systems don't have common indexes to identify the customer. Then, Steve's team spends four weeks fixing it. The middle translation layer tries to match people using addresses and phone numbers to see if they are the same customers. Then, they map out the data flows across billing, the call center, and user logs. They put in many late nights with lots of coffee and pizza. They sleep in the hallways. Finally, the data connects across systems for the first time. If you would like a one-page handout of what we are drawing right now and all future videos, please sign up on my mailing list. To help you with AI adoption and integration in your organization, 
please reach out. Now back to the video. The walls are down. The team feeds the data into the AI platform. It does the work in minutes, something that would have taken people years. A human analyst usually looks for linear cause and effect. They might ask questions like, did they quit the day we raised prices or the day we did X or Y? But the AI looks for nonlinear cor correlations. It scans back in time. It looks for patterns separated by weeks across thousands of variables. The system produces an answer. The customers leaving aren't correlated with product bugs or pricing. Molly looks at the screen. The platform displays the results. Customers were quitting because of what happened three weeks ago on a Tuesday. The data reveals a massive spike in on hold times every single Tuesday morning between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. Customers who waited for over 15 minutes didn't cancel right away. Instead, they hung up angry and quietly quit a few weeks later. Why Tuesday, Molly asks, and then it hits her. Tuesday mornings were for training. She made the senior staff attend. That left the new staff alone and overwhelmed. It wasn't a product failure. It was a process failure. Her customers felt ignored during these three hours, and the delay in cancellation masked the true cause. We lost customers because of a seemingly unrelated scheduling problem, Molly admits. Steve offers a rare, genuine smile. We lost customers because we weren't looking at the whole picture and all the connections. You know, Molly, an enterprise architect's job is precisely that. In the future, ask us for help. Molly immediately cancels the Tuesday trainings and implements staggered training for senior staff. The Tuesday problem disappears and customer retention stabilizes. AI is powerful but it cannot fix a broken culture. It cannot fix politics. It cannot fix old grudges. AI feels like magic, but it's built on people. People create the data. People define the rules. People decide what gets shared or hidden. When trust is broken, the AI has no clue. It sees the fragments and assumes that's correct. So bad data, leads to bad results. So before you buy the next AI tool, repair relationships, align teams, and clean the foundation. Strong AI starts with strong humans.